If you have a scenario where you want to display a value on your dashboard, display the current value of a certain cell, but then also display the previous value of this cell, I'll show you how to do that in this video. So this is my source sheet. It's very simple. I've got task name here and I've got a date column here. What I'm looking to do is to capture this date, the current value and display that on my dashboard. But I also want to display the previous value once this thing gets changed. So here's an example. So right now it says 5, 10, 23. I'm going to change it to the 11th and save my sheet. Once I do that, the 10th is already captured and now my current value is the 11th. So I can point my dashboard to this cell and I can pick up this current value from this sheet. But there's some things that are happening behind the scenes so we can display the 10th as the previous value as well. So what's happening first off, there's an automation on this sheet. And this automation says when the data is updated, copy it to the history sheet. So the history sheet is another sheet that I created and I'm gonna show you in a second how that works. But basically this just says when rows are changed and the date changes to any value, then copy that row to the history sheet. So let's go take a look at the history sheet and I'll show you how they work together. So here's my history sheet. And you can see as I made changes to this, to my source sheet, uh, those dates have been constantly updated in this history sheet. So here's my task name and my date that's copied over from my original sheet. And then these three columns are the additional columns that you're gonna need to find the last update prior to the current update. So we have our created column here that's just a right click and it's an auto generated column that, that just records the date that each row hits uh, this sheet. This is our latest column. This one has a formula on it as well. This one just calculates and says if the created date at the row is equal to the max of all the created dates, in other words, the latest created date, then give me a check. So that tells me that this is my latest, uh, my latest row. So I'm going to actually exclude this whenever I look for my previous date. And then the final one is our row ID. So this is another auto generated column. So when you right click, you can choose uh, the auto generated number, which is the row ID. So this is Smartsheet just adding in these rows, uh, these rows as they get added in. And then finally over here in my sheet summary field, this is where the magic happens. So I've added a added a date field here that says last updated date and you can tell right now it says 510 which is right here 511 is the current date and this is our previous date so in this field we also have a formula so this is an index max collect formula so this says let me collapse this thing so this says the index we're going to index the date column so i'm going to use this to grab values out of by looking for the max of the row ID here and where latest is checked off, where latest is zero. So it's saying, okay, find me, find me the, the latest date where this column is blank and it's the highest number of the row ID, which gives us this row here, our 510. So that's why 510 shows up in our sheet summary. So what I would do is I would point my dashboard to this sheet summary field and display this field as my previous updated date. So I'll show you how that works one more time. We go to the source sheet, we'll update this date to the 12th and save it. And now that row is copied over to our history sheet. So we'll jump back over to our history sheet and there's our 12th row. It's marked as latest, so it's not getting picked up in our calculation and our last updated date is 5-11. Hope that helps.